Okay, uh, so far we've been doing a lot this year on uh, web development, both client side with JavaScript and jQuery and uh, server side with uh, PHP. Um, and as I said, I keep building up to, uh, you know, we're going to obviously take these uh, web applications and make them kind of standalone applications in some cases, but basically make them more of a application you would install and um, whether it be on a phone on a tablet, on Linux, on Windows, on Mac, and it's all the same. Once you write the program, if written properly, it should run on every operating system, any major operating system, with little to no change. It's just a matter of packaging them. So first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is just make a very simple jQuery searchable uh, list application. And then in the other videos in this series, we are going to um, sh I'm going to show you how to package them for different operating systems, Android, Windows, Linux. Um, I don't have any uh, Mac or iPhone OSs, but the concept will pretty much be the same. But first we need a very basic application. I haven't really gotten into jQuery mobile in any of my tutorials, but you'll see here it's very simple to, we're just going to use some examples off their website uh, and create a very basic application. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Google jQuery mobile or just go to jQueryMobile.com. Here you can go to downloads and download uh, the, the jQuery mobile script. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click on this themes, which brings you to their theme roller. And uh, let's make this full screen here and we'll get rolling. And this makes it very simple for you to uh, design themes. And they recommend having a few different themes that you can call from. So, if for example, I can make this kind of a, a red theme over here, and all this, though this looks kind of ugly <laughs> as it is, you can call colors from different elements. So, it's good to have a few different things so that later on, if you do want a certain bar to be red to make it stand out, you can make one thing red. Um, so, you know, just drag some colors over and, and create some themes, whether they be ugly or not. You can add more if you want. Uh, and obviously, this is theme A, B, and C. So at this point, I'm going to just click download my theme. They require you to give it a name. It doesn't really matter what you name it. I'm just going to call it list since we're making a list application. And I'll say download zip. And it downloads a zip file with everything you need in it. So now we'll close that up a little bit. And let's go Oops, full screen here. What am I doing? Full screen here. There we go. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to that I downloaded that zip file to my downloads folder. So I'm just going to copy it to my working directory here. So I'm going to copy from my downloads jQuery. Uh, every time you download a jQuery mobile theme, it's going to be called jQuery mobile theme, and then have a a random number after that. I'll copy it to my current directory and unzip it. And now I can say I can open it up in my web browser. Uh, there's nothing server-side in here, so you can just run it locally, which is good for what we're doing. Uh, so I'll just use my Google Chrome and open up the uh, example index HTML. And this is what it looks like here. Uh, they just give you some examples of a slider bar here and, and some buttons. Nothing, doesn't, none of it really does anything at this point. We're going to clear most of that out anyway. But uh, if I Google search jQuery mobile list view, uh, or I can just go to the documentation page, which if I just do list view, it's going to bring me to the documentation on their list view with all their different options here. And um, so I'm going to come over here to the side and I'm going to find um, a, a inset search filter bar. And once again, I'm not going over the details of this. Their documentation is really great. Uh, and I'll probably do maybe more in-depth tutorials in the future. But for right now, I'm just going to go to this example uh, and look at the source code, and I'm just going to copy this uh, list view here. Uh, so we have a list view, filter is set to true, uh, it has no theme set, so it's going to default to A, although we could choose different themes since we created three of them. Uh, and that inset true, I think that just makes it not go the full screen, it kind of gives it this, uh, here, let's go back here, kind of gives it this rounded look, where if you didn't have that, it would be more like this list view over here. 
Also, you notice that they highlight when I hover over them and they have little arrows. That's because these are uh, uh, links, so they have the uh, uh, hyperlink reference here. Uh, they don't really go anywhere. They're going to link back to itself. Uh, but I'm just going to copy that and then come down to my editor here. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but obviously use whatever editor you prefer. And I'm going to open up the example HTML that we were looking at. Obviously, you probably want to change the title for your actual application. Uh, and here, it's linking to um, the JavaScript on the website. Depending on what you're doing, you may want to do that. You may want to download it. Probably in a future tutorial, we'll probably download them since we're going to be creating standalone applications. All depending on whether your application is going to require internet access or not. If it's going to require it, you might as well host it online. You can host it on your own server. But at this point, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go down to the div tag that says content. And I'm going to delete everything inside that div tag. You can also see that the content div tag is set to data theme A, which is going to be our default theme, which is the, the gray theme. I will paste in our list here. Save that. And if I go back to our web browser here, go back to the tab where I had opened up the index.html and hit F5 to refresh, you can see our list view here. And you can see that the search filter is actually using our theme, uh, B theme, uh, which we might change because that's actually kind of ugly right there. But uh, we have a filter set to true. If I go back into the code here, um, you can see that it says data filter true. Uh, and that means that we have this little search bar at the top of our list. And we can start typing. So you can see their example is lists of, of car manufacturers. So I can start typing. I can type in C, narrows it down to all that contain the letter C. And if I do CH, you can see Chrysler and Porsche are the two that come up because they both have CHs in it. Uh, one thing I want to note, uh, this is you know obviously great for mobile devices. The list is very easy to click. Also great for desktop applications, which is what another thing we're going to be using it for here. That's why I'm using this as an example. Um, that, but the search filter here, I find if the list is extremely long, uh, mobile devices such as phones are a little slow. So you can see how fast I type and it quickly finds it all. If I had a list that was like, I'd say over 50 or 100 things in the list, it takes two or three seconds for my phone, at least, to filter through the list. Not the end of the world, but something to keep in mind. If you're going to have extremely long lists, you might be better doing uh, re requesting stuff from the server using uh, PHP or whatever server-side script and calling requests. That's what I do on my website with the um, uh, list of videos. Um, but once again, it depends on the size of your list. This list might be generated. Uh, on the server side anyway, depending on what you're listing. If the list is going to change, you may want it to be dynamic. Uh, but that's something to keep in mind. If the list is going to be really long and you're going to want to run on mobile devices, you might want to think of a better way to filter through. And I'm saying if it's over 50, you might want to test it. If it's over 100, you probably want to uh, narrow down the list because it looks like, I don't know, there's what, 20 to 30 things in this list. So double that. It might start running a little slow on a mobile device. Just saying. Okay. Uh, so we pretty much have our mobile um, or our application, which can be run on mobile or uh, uh, desktop application. And this is great. This is something that, um, once again, you can set up on your website and have people go straight through to the browser, which I personally recommend. I think mobile devices or even desktop devices, if it doesn't have to be local, I think it should be on the web. I'm not saying, I, mean, I understand that a lot of people don't like cloud-based stuff because you're giving away your data, but I'm saying in a way that you can create your own application on your own server. I mean, servers are so cheap now, you can get yourself a pogo plug for 15 to 20 bucks, run your own web server on it. Uh, also, if you're not requiring server-side scripts, you can host it, I'm pretty sure, on something like Dropbox. So definitely, depending on what you're doing, different situations. Um, but that's our basic application. But since we are going to be making this a program that you may want to run completely locally without any server-side stuff um, and uh, and you, you know you may or may not want uh, the user to be able to use this application with or without web access so if you don't have web access uh, it will be installed locally 
Uh, that's where we were talking about earlier. It's linking to the full links of all these things, except for our, our CSS theme, which is created with the roller, which is in a subfolder here. You may want to download all these things locally. So I'm going to do that real quick as part of this tutorial. So this, this CSS, the, the jQuery mobile CSS file, I am just going to, I'm just going to put it all in the main folder here. So I'm going to say wget um, that file. So now you can see if I list out, that file is now here. And if I go back into my script here, I can now just remove the link and just give it the file name since it's in the local directory, the current directory. And I will do the same for this. I'll highlight that and copy the address and then I'll highlight this. So now I can wget this and I can wget this one as well. So if I list, you can see I've got my two, my jQuery and my jQuery mobile uh, JavaScripts in here. So now I can go back into my uh, index HTML here and just give it the file names. And we can obviously go back and make sure I did everything properly by F5. Everything looks good. Everything works fine. It's just all running local now rather than going out to the internet for that JavaScript stuff. All depending on what you're doing with your application. And of course, as I also said earlier, you might want to give it a different name. So if you're running it in a web browser, it will show up as a title. We'll say, oops, my list view. Okay, so we got our basic application. Once again, we'll run on pretty much any device with a modern browser right now, uh, but we're going to look into packaging it to make it seem more like, or make it actually a standalone application um, that you can install on your machine locally rather than opening it up in a web browser, because uh, there might be situations where you want to do that. So I hope you continue watching this series as I release the videos over the coming weeks. Um, be sure to check out the annotation for the full playlist uh, so you can see them all in order as they come out. Thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.